All right, this is Herb Fargus. Um, today I'm going to show you how to replicate the functionality of most of RetroPie on your PC um, through Emulation Station and RetroArch as your backend. So what you're going to first do is you're going to take Emulation Station, go to emulationstation.org, download, and click on the Windows installer if you're on Windows. Um, and then once it's downloaded, you'll go into your downloads and install it. So you do yes, I agree, next, next, install. Okay, great, fantastic. Um, and then once that's done installing, um, you're gonna want to download a zip file that I have uh, packaged for you. It just has a bunch of configurations to make it easier. So we'll download that. And I'll give it a second to download. It's being a bit slow today. So it's finished installing Emulation Station, and we've got that, so we'll download that. Um, so once Emulation Station is installed, if you go into your local disk C, users, and then my username is Herb Fargus, so double click on that, and then you see at the very top there's a thing called dot .emulation station, that was what was installed with Emulation Station. So right now it's not much, just themes, that's all there is, but we got to add a bunch more stuff to it. So uh, we'll go to the downloads and the thing I just downloaded, the .emulation station configuration file. So we'll do extract all, and we'll browse, and so under my username of Fargus, emulation station, and then just click on that and say OK, extract. All right, so it's extracted, and so now we have a lot more files in here. And so now we're going to put RetroArch in as the, uh, the main core of... Um, so all the emulators and basically everything that makes it work. Um, so we're going to go to buildbot.libretro.com and there are a couple different things. So there's going to be stable and nightly. Nightly is uh, experimental basically, so there's a lot of unstable things in there. Um, there's a lot more options with it, but we're just going to go with stable for now. Um, you can, I'll show you a little bit later about how to do the experimental build. Um, so we're going to stable, and then this is for 32-bit or 64-bit. If you're not sure, go to your computer, right-click, and go into properties. You see under system type, 64-bit operating system. So I'm going to choose x64. And then there's two options, uh, core and retro. You're going to download them both. Um, so once they're downloaded, we're going to our downloads folder, and we're going to find RetroArch, and we're going to extract all. And then we're going to browse to our emulation station folder again. And under systems, there is one called RetroArch. And so we'll press OK and extract. And then that's going to extract it into our RetroArch folder. And then once this is done, we're going to extract the cores into this folder we just created. Because um, the cores are the emulators, essentially. And if you're not sure about which emulators do what, you can go to the LibRetro wiki and these are all of the .dll files essentially in the middle and then these are all of the consoles that they emulate and so there can be multiple cores per emulator so if we go into the SNES um, you can see that there's quite a few there's BSNES, Accuracy, Balance, Performance, SNES, Linux, 9xx so there, there's a lot of different kinds so you can swap them out and see which ones you prefer to use um, I've put the ones that have worked for me in the configuration files but you can change those to fit your needs um, Okay, so, and then I'll just do yes, since they're the same folder. Okay, so now we're going to go back to our downloads folder and extract our cores that we had downloaded. So right-click and extract all, and then we're going to browse, go into Vargas Systems, RetroArch, and then Cores, and then press OK, extract. Okay, so while this is extracting, I'm going to show you a couple configuration files that need to be changed. Um, so the first one we're going to be looking at, we'll go back to our local disk, users, Fargus, Emulation Station. So the first one is ES Systems Config. This is for Emulation Station. And there are going to be two different ones. The first one, this is the one in by default. It should work for most everyone. Um, but if you've got spaces in your username like I do, you can see uh, space Fargus, it might not work for you. And so I've got a separate configuration file for that um, that you'll need to replace. It with so we'll right click on your system spaces and edit with notepad and you'll see right here it says username um, so just a quick overview of how this works you'll replace this with your own but um so this is the system so it's 3do or atari 2600 and then this is the path to the roms which i already have pre-configured so you don't need to worry about that unless you needed to add more 
Um, and then this is the accepted file type. So if your ROM was like a .iso file, that's what it would read. Um, and then here it says command, so this is to launch RetroArch. And then the L is to launch the core, which is this next one, which is the core for Fordio Libretro. And then this is for Stella for Artari 2600 and so forth. And then the ROM raw, this is the script that will run the ROM. Um, so in order to replace it with your username, you'll just press Control F in uh, Notepad++ and replace. And so we'll find username and replace it with a Pythagoras or your own. Um, make sure the space is in there if you've got a space. So then you'll do replace all. And then you're going to do file, save as, and then ES systems config. And then so down here you're going to type .cfg at the end. And say save. And then do you want to replace it? Yes. If you don't have a space, you don't need to worry about doing any of this. Um, it'll probably work with yours. But if it doesn't, you can try this. Um, so that's all done. Fantastic. We've got a close down and there's one more configuration file and then we'll test it out and see if it works. Um, so we're back in our OpFargus simulation station systems retroarch um, and we've got a cause they are all put in there. Um, so there's one more s configuration file and by the way this is the system thing here. This is where you're going to put your BIOS files so if you're playing Game Boy Advance or Nintendo DS you're going to have to put some extra files in there to make it work um, otherwise it'll just go black and then not start. Um, so, the one last thing we need to modify is called retroarch.cfg, so we'll edit with notepad again, and um, we are going to press control F, and we're going to find thread, so find next, um, so video threaded, we're going to change it from false to true, if you don't do this, it might be really, really laggy with the audio and go really slow, and it's not really that conducive to playing video games, so... Just change it to true, and you'll press save, and then you should be good to go. And you can modify other configuration files through the F1 menu in RetroArch, or you can modify them here, so you can tell it to, you can make it go full screen by changing this to true. Um, but I'll just leave everything else for now. And then, uh, that's all good, that's all good. So we are going to do one more thing. We're going to add a ROM, and then we'll test it out. So, emulation station, we'll go into our ROMs folder. And I've got a Super Nintendo ROM here, so... SNES is for Super Nintendo, and then we are going to drag it over here, okay, and then now that that's all done, we'll open up into Emulation Station and see if it works, so hold down a button to configure your controller, up, down, left, right, A, B, start, select, page down, page up, and then, okay, so Super Nintendo shows up, that's good, I don't know if you can see this or not, um, and then Super Mario World. And there we are, it's all working. And it runs, and default, X is your default A button, and then your arrows, but you can press um, F1 to modify options, configuration, settings, um, and then you can change it to work with uh, joypads and other stuff like that. Um, so, for those of you that want the experimental package and want all of that stuff to work, um, I'll show you how to do that real quick. So I'm going to exit out of Emulation Station right now, and then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to delete everything in the RetroArch folder because it's going to be a completely separate build and I don't want any configurations messing it up. So I've already downloaded the nightly, so I'm going to show you back where it's at. Um, if we go back into buildbot.libretro.com and the nightlies, you're going to go back into your build, so I've got 64-bit, and so if you want the absolute latest, you can do the latest RetroArch full, um, or you can do one of these, so you'll want to download this one, or the latest RetroArch.7-zip, and then you're also going to want to download the redist 64 zip and that's basically just um, files that will um, the retroarts needs to run um, so once you've got those downloaded we will go into our downloads folder again and so here they are we've got our retroarch folder and then our redis folder so we'll right click and then we're using 7zip so you're going to extract your files and then you're going to browse to 
the same folder again, and then under System, under Retroarch, extract them here, press OK, and then it's going to extract them all, and then you're going to want to do the same thing for the redist file, so that it will actually run when you start it up. So let that finish extracting, and there are a couple extra steps on this to get it to work. But the thing that's nice about this one is it's got like the Nintendo DS emulator um, and a few other things. So, um, but it is a little more unstable. It crashes more often, and it might have some more issues. Um, so now we'll take the redist file, and then we're going to simzip, extract files, and then we're going to locate our retroarch folder again, and then press OK, and OK. And then these are just all the DLL files. OK, so now that that's all done, we're going to go back into our emulation station folder. And then we're going to go under Systems, Retroarch, and then um, we're going to open up, well actually first we'll look at cores and you'll see they're all .info files and that's not going to work, we need to actually have the .dll files. So in order to get those you're going to use the core updater in Retroarch. So you double click on Retroarch here, it'll open up to Retroarch and um, this just goes, shows you all the different menu configuration, so press X, um, so core updater, press X, and so here is where you're going to download all of your cores, so let's say I just wanted to download the BSNES accuracy, so you'll press X, and it'll download, and then you can see in our cores folder that it downloaded the DLL file, so you'll do that for all of the cores that you want to use that will be in your configuration file. And if you have any new ones, you need to make sure that you add them in the uh, systems config file as well. Um, but yeah, so that's how you get those DLL files for the latest builds. And then you just do the same thing as we did in the other steps, put your ROMs on and put your BIOS file, files in the shader, or, um, in system. So this one doesn't have a system folder. So you just create one, call it system. And then that's where you're gonna put all your BIOS. Just put them in here and then you'll be good to go. So hopefully that's useful for you. Um, another thing too, for ScumBM, if you like those games, um, if you go under ROMs or systems, ScumBM, you can download ScumBM into here. And then what you'll do is you'll want to create batch scripts for your ScumVM games. And so that way you can just click on them from Emulation Station and it'll open the game right up instead of having to go through the GUI. So um, I can show you how those look under desktop and desktop shortcuts, ScumVM. So I've got a bunch of them here, but um, just open up with Notepad. All right, so this is how they look. So you'll have to go through the ScumVM GUI once, and then you'll hold shift and click on mass add and um, locate the directory for all of your ROMs, where you put them, which is going to be in the same path as um, your other ROMs. So under here, there's one for ScumVM. So you'll navigate to that, and you'll put in all of those files into each of these. Um, and then you'll create a batch script that looks like this. So this is your home path, and then the path to ScumVM. And then minus F is just to make it full screen. And then this is the file for the game name. And you can see those in um, for whichever data files you decided to add. So this one would be baseball. There'd be four or five of them, .heo files or whatever they are. So hopefully that's useful if you decide to do that. And you'll save it as a .bat file. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully that's useful. I found it uh, pretty useful, um, just in case I only had my laptop and didn't want to use a Raspberry Pi. So, enjoy.